Well, Garrett on the go, our Walt Disney World reporter, is uh, with us here today to talk Disney World updates, to definitely talk about uh, what's happening out on the East Coast in Orlando. Garrett, my friend, what's shaking? What should we know? Um, first, before we begin, I have to ask you guys something. So I'm at uh, Pinocchio's Village House, and I have to ask, is Pinocchio German or Italian? Because Pinocchio, the name, is Italian, but Village House, H-A-U-S, which is German, so... Is it German or is it Italian? That's I think it's sort of that answer. region of, of the world that they're trying to hit on. I don't necessarily okay. think that it was a, a specific a specific cultural reference with Pinocchio. I th- okay. I uh, feel like right. they are Italian, but he is making a little German-based... He works in a German artist artistic way, Geppetto. Like, is that... It's a story of, of immigration and, yeah. and coming to understand. I don't even know your if it's that. I, that's, as that's, <laughs> you're getting very political. And that's not even what I'm trying to say. It sounds but, like it. Okay. <laughs> no. Anyway, let's continue on. Wow. Yes. Well, right. uh, I think the question will always be out there now. And perhaps you can ask a, a friendly cast member that would be uh, uh, there working at the Village House. Maybe, maybe they know. I don't know. Hmm, possibly. Um, but... Uh, the first thing I want to talk about in uh, Walt Disney World news is that uh, last week, um, actually, yeah, last week, the people mover started smoking. What? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the people mover caught a little bit of smoke up there, and that is in no way an imaginary smoke screen trying to be like, <laughs> welcome to the future, the haze of the future. No, it's nothing like that. Um, no, Disney has not put out an official word, but apparently... Uh, according to uh, like like reports and everything, it seems that there was uh, some kind of malfunction with the moving belt. That it was like rubber on on rubber, and it was creating friction, thus creating heat, thus creating smoke. Uh, so it was electrical and, and rubber issue, uh, which is very sad. And the crazy thing about it was, I was actually on that attraction probably an hour and a half before that actually happened, and I walked out and. Then I got home. And I was like, "Oh, I was just on that thing." So kind of, kind of crazy. Small world. Whoa. If um, you will. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that happened there, so that was kind of uh, kind of sad. Is but is everything back thing. up into ship shape, Garrett? Everything uh, uh, at yeah, the people all mover? The, all the way, all the way from Fantasyland. I can tell that things are ship shape over in uh, Tomorrowland. Well, listen to you all, Snippy. Of course, yeah. uh, being the Walt Disney World reporter, I just figured maybe maybe you had heard. I, I don't know. Yeah, so, um, so far everything's up and running. There hasn't been any more uh, errors or any sort of issues like that. The Reedy Creek uh, Police, uh, sorry, Fire Department went in there. They checked it out. They did a thorough walkthrough of the ride and didn't find any other issues. I believe it was just in that one area, but it's now doing its uh, normal operations, uh, you know, taking people throughout the, the land of tomorrow. Well, it wasn't um, even the actual people mover, though, right? It was just the the like little conveyor belt getting up yeah, to the people. Yeah, mover, right? uh, yeah, it was the it was sort of the the escalator that was just rubber. Yeah, it wasn't sure. even the attraction. Uh, but still, they, they did a sweep and uh, it's good to go now. So I'm very glad because that's one of my favorite attractions. I absolutely love the people. Mover. Absolutely, I saw social media kind of blow up uh, when everything had occurred that day. Uh, oh my gosh, there's there's smoke, there's fire, yeah. there's there's all mm-hmm. kinds of different reports as to what was going yeah, there, on. There, there was there was no fire. There was all. no fire, right? And no, uh, somebody, no, one of the like, Reedy Creek uh, Fire Department like spokespeople, uh, ended up coming out and saying that there was smoke, there was no fire, but they didn't necessarily define what the cause was, which Mm -hmm. I don't know why anyone, and Disney didn't put out a statement about this, by the way, Uh, nowhere can anybody find information about what happened. And so that is even worse than just owning what was going on. I mean, obviously it went back up the same night uh, as everybody has been sharing. And uh, so things went right back into action to not make a statement, to not just say, oh, it was our our conveyor belt or, oh, things got a little hot is kind of, I think, uh, a, a little bit like just letting the internet go wild with theories. It sucks, but it's, they want it to go away. And if they keep <laughs> and if they talk about it, then it's not going to go away. And like, sure, we're talking about it right now. You know, some Disney fans will continue to talk about it, but the vast majority of people that are going to go to Disney World 
ha have no idea that this just happened and they don't want people to know that this just happened. You know, that's that's really what I think is That's the a case. good corporate strategy. Ignore it. Let it go away. <laughs> I really do think that's the case. Don't worry about uh, uh, matters of safety. And we have no reason to believe that um, there was any anything that would have hurt anyone. Um, but it's certainly one of those things that because it was getting so much traction on social media so quickly, uh, I thought, OK, you got to make a statement. You got to say something like, oh, it's it's not a problem. Oh, it's nowhere near as bad as, as everybody's making it out to be. But not a peep. So that's too bad. But glad to hear People Mover is safe and back in action. Yeah. Uh, another thing that has happened in the past week is that the Disney Skyliner uh, has undergone a little bit of, I guess, a push of advertising, so to speak. So uh, currently, the resorts that are attached to the Skyliner, such as the Art of Animation, uh, Caribbean Beach, um, those two, they no longer are doing their... I guess, like multiple bus um, trek to Epcot and Hollywood Studios is now a, there's a only one bus per hour going that way. So essentially what that means is it is forcing people to either Uber, uh, swim, walk, uh, or have to take the Skyliner to Pop Century uh, from those resorts over to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. And um, I think that is in part just because like maybe the Skyliner isn't getting as much love as the uh, Disney leadership had hoped, and so this is a sort of a forcing guest hand where it's like, you can still go to the parks, you're just going to wait, uh, or you're going to hop on the Skyliner and go over there and take to the sky, because uh, I've gone on a Skyliner, done a review of it, and I think the Skyliner is a lot of fun. Uh, maybe some people are nervous just because of the incident that happened a while back, um, but I think the Skyliner is a great way of getting around. It's quick, it's easy, it's effective, and it's free. That's probably the best part, it's free. And you don't have to worry about a bus. You can easily fit 10 people inside of each one of those uh, gondolas. So, yeah, yeah you did a great video uh, sort of showcasing uh, all of the uh, the terrific uh, sorts of experiences you can have and uh, things that you can do while you're in the Skyliner as well. I encourage everybody yeah. to check that out on our YouTube page at The Kingdom Report. Uh, but uh, I know that they definitely posted something about this at Pop Century specifically, uh, saying, hey, because they have such a major station there between Pop Century Resort and Art of Animation Resort, uh, we're encouraging everybody to use the Skyliners because, excuse me, Skyliner, because bus service is being reduced to uh, once an hour. Uh, Tyler, what's your take on this, given the fact that obviously these resorts uh, have thousands of rooms, right? The Pop Century and Art of Animation are, are two very large resorts in terms of how many people they pack in. Um, when it comes down to it, do you feel like it was the right way to go to start eliminating bus service to these two parks? Or um, do you think maybe they should have kept the buses flowing for now? I think this was the plan all along to yep. cut bus services. I mean, the whole entire reason of doing this is... Yeah, it's good for the environment and Disney, you know, they say they care a lot about the environment. I believe them. I think they do. But also, let's be honest, it's a lower, the, the bottom line gets better for them. You know, mm -hmm. they, they save money on this stuff, too. So, um, and it's also safer. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, there was an act, there was one accident with the Skyliner. And it's kind of funny when I say it's, oh, oh it's safer. <laughs> but it actually is true. Like, mm -hmm. statistically, it's going to be safer than putting a bunch of people in a bus. So, um, you know, it sucks. Uh, anytime they take something away, it's not fun. But at the same time, they did actually add something too. So, you know, I don't know what to say. It's it's they are also the um, the cheapest resorts to stay in on property. So they might not have as great amenities as some of the other resorts. Uh, I don't th I I don't know what the actual line is like mm -hmm. in the morning. Like I, I haven't experienced that yet of trying to get up in the morning and get to a park early because if that line is going to be a 30 minute wait or whatever, then this is a huge bummer for people. But if it's just a quick thing, if you're just getting on the, the Skyliner pretty quick, I don't, I don't see a downside really to the bus service being slowed down a little bit, to be honest. Uh, and again, it's better for the environment. It's safer. So I think about those poor folks that have a fear of heights, one. I think about those people that get uh, easily claustrophobic, two. Uh, yeah. Um, you I, know, I, I think that those concerns, and I and I get it, you know, you can plan ahead for, you know, the once an hour pickup, I, I suppose. But then I think about how many people won't understand this for several months. Like, it's it hasn't been ingrained into the, the guest culture yet. And so 
I'm sure they have people out there. I'm like, I'm sure that there's signage and I'm sure that they're making it very clear sure. that this is what they want folks to do. Um, but I think that you're still going to get overwhelmed buses for the next couple of months while they figure this thing out and try and get guests to understand that they need to go use the Skyliner. Yeah, it's true. And I, I will say as somebody who I will, I don't like heights mm -hmm. at all. Um, uh, I, don't, I won't even go like rock climbing or anything because just getting that, that level off the ground freaks me out sometimes. But for whatever reason, the Skyliner didn't uh, bother me, and I'm not saying that's good that to know. you know that, I'm not saying that that'll be the case for everybody. I'm sure there'll be some people who are like, "Oh, this is not fun at all," but mm -hmm. uh, it's really kind of just beautiful, honestly. Uh, it's 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 a better view than a bus if you think about it. When you're in the bus, you're just you just have nothing to look at besides you know some grass and some other cars going by. When you're in the Skyliner, you have this nice view of you know wa of the water you're passing by and all these you know, you get to see from above, which is just a nicer view. So I don't know. It wasn't scary at all to me. It was just fun. And um, I don't know. I just I just don't see this as a big downside. So I, I, think, I, I definitely, think people will be okay. I think I'm a little bit more concerned about the idea here. And, and Garrett, you can chime in on this because you've experienced it. The amount of times that the Skyliner stops in a, in a given mm -hmm. route and how many delays that there are, uh, it seems like they haven't quite figured out the pacing yet. And, you know, the big sell point on this is, oh, the Skyliner's constant. Skyliner just doesn't stop. So you don't have to worry about it because it keeps flowing. But that's not necessarily true. And you've experienced that, right? Yeah. So when I went on the Skyliner, it was about a week after uh, its little incident. And it, for me, it stopped I think a grand total of three or four times. And one of the stops was like for three minutes at a time. And um, that can easily be a little nerve wracking for someone who isn't uh, inclined to experiencing like heights like that. Cause you're easily 50, 75 feet off the ground. And it's a breathtaking view, like Tyler said, but um, like, I think, I think people are still getting used to this idea of a gondola because there hasn't been a gondola on a Disney property since the old Tomorrowland, uh, Fantasyland gondolas in Disneyland, and even that, that was an attraction. This is more of a transportation system. So it definitely is going to take a lot of time for people to get used to this. Um, but overall, um, the pacing has gotten better. I don't see as many stops. If they are, it's for something very minor. Usually what, it, uh, what happens is you're trying to get someone from the, uh, from the handy capable area and getting it onto the line because it, like there are multiple lines going at the same time. There's the main line that's going faster, and then you have the loading one, and then you have a handicapped line. So there's a total of three lines at every, at every, I guess, station. Um, so it just takes some getting used to, but the gondolas, I think, are very effective. Um, but one thing I want to chime in is uh, I think Disney is doing a fantastic way of helping people get over their fear of heights because it's either you're going to get over the fear of heights or you're going to wait in line for a bus. So we're going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> you're slowly going to figure it out on your own whether or not uh, this is something you're comfortable with because, by God, you're going to be forced into it uh, if you don't want to wait. Well, Garrett, what else is going on in Walt Disney World we should know about? So one major thing is that if you want to come to Walt Disney World uh, 2020, uh, like everyone wants to come for 2021 because that's the 50th. But if you want to come this year, you are in luck because there are massive deals going on right now for you to come to Walt Disney World. There is 20 to 25% off rooms. There are massive four day uh, park tickets. There is just a ton going on around here. Like this, uh, this spring and summer, Walt Disney World is really pushing for people to come out here. And uh, it, for me, it was very sudden when I heard the news just because I thought like people are going to come to Walt Disney World regardless. But I think one thing that, uh, that, Disney is planning for is that this year is the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. So maybe they're afraid that the, that the Olympics are going to steal a lot of the crowds because people want to celebrate, want to root for their country. Because I remember the summer of uh, FIFA when it was down in Brazil uh, or the Olympics down in Brazil, sorry. Um, those took so much of the crowds away. Like the, the tourists that usually come here, it, the parks were somewhat empty. So I think they're just trying to plan for that and just giving people, like, you want to come out here, we will give you these discounts. So the hotels, sorry, quick transition, the hotels near Disney Springs, they have a huge discount over there, um, 20 25%, like I said. They also have it where they, you still get an experience, uh, extra magic hours, uh, and you get to use all your fast passes uh, extra a few months early if you were staying at a Disney resort, which is amazing. 
the park tickets, I believe you can get uh, a four day park ticket for $89 a day as opposed to its usual, I think 116 plus. Um, so it's very, very nice. And uh, one other major thing that might be stealing away um, or when, it's just that there's a lot of construction going on at Walt Disney World right now. Construction is just going on everywhere. Uh, pretty much every park you look, except for uh, Animal Kingdom, there's construction here. You've got Tron. Uh, I imagine you have Tron over in Hollywood Studios. You have uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And then over at Epcot, it's just undergoing a massive transformation right now. So I think Disney is afraid that the construction will keep people away because they're like, why should I come to a park that's half open, which is well, pretty much what Hollywood Studios was for, for three years. But uh, I'm, I'm just, I, I was shocked that I saw these deals, but hey, if you want a reason to come to Disney World and you want to save some cash, the spring and summer is, is when you want to do it. Yeah, that's for sure. And I think even on top of that, they've now released uh, dining discounts, deep dining, free dining discounts. Um, they've even offered up, like you had mentioned, um, some various options when it comes to tickets that they've never offered before. Uh, it really sounds like there's some fear potentially that this year is not going to pan out like uh, most years at Disney parks where you're inundated, um, you know, during most of those big seasons throughout the year. I mean, quite honestly, it's gotten to the point now where, um, you know, there are no off times at Disney parks, there are no off seasons. And yet um, it seems like the discounts are really being pumped into this year to try and stimulate uh, some sort of reaction uh, to get people into these rooms and to get people into the uh, parks. Because, I mean, even with the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge now being complete, quote, on quote, uh, <laughs> to be uh, sort of complete and to have Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway coming, as has been mentioned, to have all those things happening and to know that there are these new offerings and new experiences for people to come see, and yet there's still this concern, it seems like, from Disney corporate because they are pumping in discounts. They don't have to, and they typically don't when times are good. So your take, Tyler, on the whole concept of, hey, it's Discount City this year. Honestly, I think they do discounts every year, and I think it's the normal for them. I think they, I think they, I think they put the prices up high. Mm -hmm. We all know how high these prices are. And then they can say, oh, we'll take a little bit off the top and, and it makes people excited to book a vacation. I think it's kind of a goal that they uh, that they strive to every year. And and uh, I don't think it's really out of the normal for them to do this. I, I don't I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah. I think that's that it's pretty standard procedure for them. It's standard procedure through the year. Sure. Not at the top of the year. Well, that's I guess that's true. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they did that. They did that sort of thing last year as well. Uh, so. As you said just a, a, a couple minutes ago, it's there. We're becoming, we're getting to a time where there's never off time. Mm -hmm. There's never like an off season at these parks. Summer and has kind of become the new off peak time. It seems like you know, almost, uh, yeah. People are coming during summer, which has always traditionally been the go time for Disney parks. So. Yeah, it really, it really is almost becoming that, especially because in Florida, like nobody wants to deal with that weather. Right. So <laughs> I mean, it's like, why would I be there? Um, so I guess. I guess I just feel like they're going to keep on offering these discounts all the time because because people are coming all the time. So mm -hmm. and they say discounts, they say sales, but like let's be honest, they project for you know this amount of money. It's it's a dis it's sure it's a sale on on what the price of uh you know the price that they said it was, but they can they make the prices. They can make them whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not really Sale is a is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one positive out of all of this is that it's good for us, good for Disney yeah. fans. And Garrett, I want to touch on something here that uh, happened earlier this week that's really unfortunate, and that is uh, Auntie Cowie, the Disney cultural sort of representative uh, for Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, has passed away. Uh, she was in her late 80s, and she's been a part of the Disney World experience for so many families that have stayed at the Polynesian. Um, she's somebody that, even though I never really spoke to her, I never really engaged with her, um, I always saw her at the Polynesian. Polynesian Village Resort. Every time I would go into that resort, she was in the lobby. She was making lays for people. She made you feel like you were transported somewhere else. I mean, she really added those extra touches of Disney magic. Um, do, do you have any recollection of Auntie Cowie? I mean, some people go to uh, Polynesian 
every time they visit Disney World, and that's their home mm-hmm. resort, and she's a part of the experience. Uh, have you ever encountered her, or have you heard anything about this? Yeah, so it's it's tragic that, that she passed away because, uh, like, when you think of, like, Walt Disney World, especially the resorts always come to mind, and uh, at many of the resorts, especially the deluxe resorts, you're going to have these people that when you walk in, you feel like you're there, such as when you used to uh, go to Grand Floridian, you would have, uh, I, I forget his name, but there was an, a kind old man out there that was dressed and everything from the Victorian era. He would be welcoming you. And then Auntie, she was uh, hanging out at the Folly. And so uh, it, it's sad. But uh, one thing they did set up is they sort of set up like a memorial table where she would make the laser. They had like a picture and they had a few of her musical instruments and her lace out there. So it was like as a you're always with us, Auntie. And for those of you that may not know, no, she is not everyone's aunt. In the uh, <laughs> Polynesian culture, um, Auntie is pretty much what you say to a close relative that is a fi- uh, is that a, a female. And like you say uncle to any male that is like like someone that you're very close with. So like it's similar in the Hispanic culture where you say Kawan, uh, Tia or Tio. It's, it's just like that. So um, it, it's very, very sad. And her spirit definitely brought a lot to the Polynesian eye never spoke to her but i'd see her there i'd see her making lace and just she'd walk in there and she would just say like aloha and you're just like hi aloha and like you just you felt like you were home which is what everyone loves to feel when they stay at a disney resort so it's very sad and uh i wish i could have uh gotten a meter no more now but that's that's always how it goes right yeah, Tyler and I were talking just before we went live about some of these themed greeters and these cast members that are, are sort of like the cornerstones of people's vacations, especially in a place like Disney World where you come and you stay for long periods of time. We were discussing how um, more and more of these cast members, especially the ones that have been there from opening day or from opening year, you know, they're they're getting up there in age and many of them are passing on. And, uh, you know, we discussed obviously the, um, the gentleman that used to run things out at the grand Floridian. He used to be the theme greeter that would welcome you. Uh, there's also sort of a themed yachtsman, uh, at Disney's yacht club resort. Um, there are certain resorts that have these themed greeters, these cultural representatives that, uh, really make you feel at home. And a couple of years ago, we lost even the mayor of main street, uh, there at magic kingdom, Christopher George Weaver. He's a guy that made my experience every time I went to magic kingdom he was somebody that really put that exclamation point on the trip um and you know we lost him a couple years ago because he got up there in age as well and i know it's a a way of life but you know i think in a place like disney tyler you know you you come to appreciate so much about the experience and you start to realize that um while the attractions can live on forever you know with maintenance and while um the shows can live on forever and, and the nostalgia pieces can definitely keep their spots the people can't live on forever. And so these experiences with the individuals, these special cast members that really sort of book in the experience, um, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to let them go. If you really boil it down and you think about it, um, like you were kind of alluding to, any, anybody can make fantastic attractions. Anybody can make these great, crazy hotels. But there is still one thing that I feel like Disney surpasses everybody else in, and that is the quality of the people that come and work there and how they are they are just in, so integral to everything, uh, every experience that you have there. Even when you, we, even riding the rides, you know, uh, you know, when they uh, do the little fairy dust on the, on the lap bar when you go on Peter Pan and everything, it's, uh, it's it's those moments that you really take away and uh, get excited about when you think about your vacation. And so to lose these people is horrible. My condolences to them, uh, especially Auntie here. And mm-hmm. uh, and um, there's no replacing them, unfortunately. Like, that's kind of what we were talking about before the show, too, is that, it, it, I mean, I guess you can, but it's just very difficult to replace these people because they have become so much of what you expect when you walk into the Polynesian, you know, right. and everything like that. That's what you expect. Um, yeah, you can replace their position. You can't replace them. Yeah, so sure. it's just going to take a long time to uh, to find these 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 new traditions. I'm going to go as far as to just call them, you know, vacation traditions. You, yep. you have to go see Richard at Grand Floridian, you know, rest in peace to him, too. You know, just it's sad. It's mm-hmm. but that's life. I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tough, but yeah. Uh, 
Auntie Cowie, uh, we will miss you and, and thank you for all the memories that you've created for us. Uh, born in a, a thunder and lightning storm in Hawaii, she was. Um, she's got an incredible story that you can find. The Orlando Sentinel did a profile on her several years ago um, where she even talks uh, in video form on the Orlando Sentinel uh, story to discuss her upbringing, her life, and uh, what brought her to Walt Disney World in 1971 uh, to open the Polynesian Village. So just a, a truly incredible story and she will be missed. Well, here. Welcome to this happy place. Welcome.